Today, we'll be looking into the law of Beidou, her backstory, her personality, and the relationship she has with the people of Liwa. So, let's get started. Who is Beidou? Beidou is the captain of the Crooks fleet, and is well known in Liwa for her unbound and forthright personality, as well as her lack of fear towards the Tian Xuan Ning Guang. Her name comes from the word for Big Dipper in Chinese, coincidentally or not, being the same Big Dipper that the Liwei Qixing are associated with. Her constellation, Victor Mare, is Latin for the Conqueror of the Sea, a fitting title considering the tales people tell of her adventures. Her flagship is known as the Alcor and its name comes from one of the two stars that make up the handle of the Big Dipper constellation. It is currently docked at the Sea of Clouds, south of Guyan Stone Forest, as Beidou has returned to Liwe Harbour for business, leaving her crew to take care of it in her absence. She loves to eat, drink, and have a good time with her crew, even having three-day celebratory banquets after returning home to Liwe Harbour from long voyages. Though she is known for her fearless and forthright attitude, many mistake this for her being heartless or overly aggressive without reason. The truth is that she has a big heart and would do anything for her crew and those she views as in need, as her character story shows. With the crooks having made a name for itself over many years, their services are extremely expensive to charter, and yet, on one voyage, when the vessel encountered a strong storm, Beidou noticed a small private boat nearby. Seeing the way it was tossed about by the waves, she ordered her crew to tow the boat to safety, despite the risk her ship's keel might collapse. What little food and water the fleet had left, Beidou shared with the rescue crew, as she navigated her vessel onward through the raging storm. Finally, after several days, the crooks delivered the rescue boat to a safe mooring spot. Grateful to Beidou for saving their lives, the crew of the rescue boat became her loyal trade partners thereafter, and many who know her personally only have good things to say about Beidou. Ganyu seems to be quite protective of her, as she says, Recently everyone in Yujing Terrace has been saying nasty things about the Crux fleet, but in my personal opinion, Beidou's contribution to Liyua Harbor goes far beyond what those miserable, rumor-loving heathens could even contemplate. Oops, I'm sorry, I... I'm not quite sure how that one slipped out. While Zhang Ling, although hesitant to trust her at first, quickly warmed to Beidou as she spent time on the Alcor. Oh, Beidou is the greatest! Every time I go out sailing with her, she always manages to fish up lots of fresh ingredients. Octopus tentacles go great in soup, and seaweed fries up great with some chilies. <laughs> Not just Beidou, but everyone on board the Crux loves my cooking. And she invites Xinyan to play music aboard her ship, with the whole crew joining in with her singing. Even some of those who don't know her personally want to be her friend, as we see with Hu Tao. Beidou is well known in Liyue. She doesn't know me, but that's cool. Me just knowing about her is enough. Oh man, I really do want to make friends with her. Beidou and her crew have also raised little Yue after his parents, who were members of the Crooks fleet, died during an expedition. He's become so inspired by Beidou that he has decided to create his own fleet when he grows up, wanting to call them the Cygnus fleet. Though she has refused to take him on their voyages, he has currently secretly stowed himself away aboard the Alcor, getting an earful from Juza, the chief mate, when he was discovered. Yao Yao is also always sneaking aboard the Alcor to spend more time with Beidou and her crew, much to Ningguang's consternation, as we see in Beidou's voice lines. Yao Yao always comes on board to play when we're in the harbor. Trouble is, when it's time for her to go, she gives you the puppy eyes and <laughs> no one has the heart to send her away. Means we're always cutting it quite close by the time we manage to set sail. Why she helps people out is likely due to her having a hard childhood 
and life in general, as she says. You want to know why I help the common folk? Why not? Everyone has their low points in life. I don't really do anything other than help steer those who are truly lost towards a brighter future. I've been through some hard times. When I was a child, we had little money, so nothing to eat, and lived for years by stealing fruit off of people's trees. Even after I got my own ship, I was cast out by pompous merchants. But me telling you such stories is merely for your amusement. I have no intention of making you live through it too. Her warm personality and love for her crew is more than reciprocated by them. Rookie is even worshipping her like a goddess after hearing the outrageous tales of her adventures. Even her older crewmates seem to be enamoured with her. As little Yue tells us, Furong will repeat Beidou's name over and over when she is alone, her face turning red. Though her name is not quite as well known as the Liyue Qixing, one can be certain that every merchant in the city knows her name, and that of her fleet. Naturally, rumours regarding someone of her status are not in short supply. One rumour is that she can channel electro energy through her sword and used it to cut in half a formidable sea monster from the depths of the ocean abyss with just one hit. Bystanders will think of this as drunken ramblings or exaggeration, but those who have voyaged with Beido know that these stories are no joke and that there is no smoke without fire. Her abilities are, in this case, just as impressive as her reputation would suggest. She isn't called the uncrowned lord of the ocean without cause. Her relationship with Ningguang is one shrouded in mystery. Though the two don't seem to see eye to eye on the surface, they both have a mutual respect and understanding of one another. There are rumours that the Crux's boss behind the scenes is none other than Ningguang herself, though both Beidou and Ningguang will deny this outright, for different reasons, as we see in Beidou's character story. As a member of the Qixing, Ningguang often needs someone else to do her dirty work for her. Of the many candidates available, she picked Beidou. Ningguang would emphasise that she picked Beidou, not the Crux. Collaboration with the Crooks is, therefore, purely incidental. Meanwhile, when Beidou hears the rumours about her dealings with Ningguang, she furiously insists that she collaborates on equal footing. Beidou is her own boss and no one, not even Ningguang, is sitting in the background pulling the strings for her. Beidou is certainly unique among Ningguang's collaborators. She does not tread carefully or show reverence in the way most of them do. In fact, one could even say Beidou is sometimes at odds with Ningguang. Ningguang's advisors worry constantly that Beidou is too unpredictable and too much of a maverick, but Ningguang simply smiles and dismisses their concerns. On the contrary, Beidou is the most reliable person in Liyue, she replies. Just tell her the truth, as well as what's in it for her, and she'll come around in her own time. And they seem to be on a similar intellectual level, as the peer labourer's gossip says. Beidou has beaten Ningguang at chess. Twice. The important part is not so much that she did win Ningguang's money, but more so that she dared to. With both women enjoying a challenge, it is not surprising that their strong personalities would have them grow to respect one another, especially as most people they deal with are afraid to challenge either of them. One challenge Beidou is often pitting herself against is the open ocean. The wild weather and waves are vast enough to destroy fleets with ease, as she is more than aware of. But the tales of great monsters rising from the depths are the most talked about in hushed tones as she walks by, especially the tale of Aishan. Beidou's meeting with this leviathan was also the encounter which granted her her vision, as we see in her character story. Liyue and Inazuma share a common saying, its fins formed the deep ocean, its tail the mountains high, which over time became sung by sailors over and over until it became the well-known song people know today. They say that whenever the mists gather over the sea's surface, one can hear the distant song of the fishermen hidden within the white shroud. 
This was Beto's childhood lullaby. The tale of Rex Lapis smiting the sea monsters had become legendary among the people of Liwa. As a child, Beto loved such tales, and in her dreams she thought, I too should like to see this giant fish. This day, however, she sang this song with a different emotion in her heart. Her entire crew sang along as they sailed. Haishan was in the waters with them, at once like a dragon and a fish. It was larger than any could have imagined in their worst nightmares, and mighty as a deity raising waves dozens of meters high with ease. Those who ply their trade on the high seas are destined to meet Haishan eventually. Beidou had longed to do so since she was nine, dreaming of slicing off its head in a single blow. Many times she had challenged the creature, and many times she had failed, but this day was different. This day she charged at Haishan with her best greatsword in hand and crack sailors at her back. The battle would rage fiercely for four days, with cannons and harpoons, arrows and ropes. The fleet would assail Haishan, while Beidou battled the thusly tied down creature for ten hours, well into the night. Now, night time was when Haishan was in its element, and in their vigilance, not a single member of the fleet even dared sleep a wink. Beidou stood upon the prow, listening to the wind. One strike, just one strike. That was all she needed, and so she waited, unmoving in the freezing wind. Then, at the crack of dawn, having neither eaten nor drank throughout the night, Beidou heard a change in the sound of the waves. With one almighty strike, that sounded as if it could have sliced the moon in two, or ripped a mountain from the face of the world, she chopped the leviathan's head clean off. The sound of thunder filled the heavens, and a single bolt of purple lightning struck the ocean right in front of Beidou, even as she bathed in the blood of her nemesis. Thus descended a vision to the slayer of the sea monster, its violet glow as stunning as lightning, and its immaculate jeweled form, a treasure more precious than dragon blood, a suitably divine gift for the hero who subdued Haishan. So, what is next for Beidou? Though we have yet to have a character quest for her, many believe that she will be the one to take us to Inazuma, likely due to her being the only one brave enough to approach such a dangerous place, as the Shogun is not allowing anyone to leave or enter the nation. Perhaps we will even get to see Beidou face off against another great sea monster on our journey over. And that's all I could find on Beidou. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider liking or subscribing to let me know, and if you have any suggestions or ideas, let me know in the comments section below. I hope you have a great day.